Good morning and thank you for being with us. This is Khalil Hashim, editor via Michigan.com, a digital business magazine serving the Arab American communities in Michigan. We provide business and real estate news, loan and lending information, support to small businesses, and much more. Visit us at yammichigan.com. It's a cold day today, and we hope that you are having a great start to your day and weekend. On behalf of US Arab Radio, we wish you the best of time, peace, and happiness. We thank our sponsors, listeners, and supporters. Today is January 19, 2024. I can't believe the month is almost gone. And uh, we have a great program for you today. We'll be talking to the IRS. We'll be talking about the news earlier. We're talking about, we'll also be talking to an author and uh, and a professor of creative writing later on in the program. There's a lot of news today. You know, the war in in uh, Gaza continues unabated, unfortunately. They, they continue refusing a ceasefire or calling for a ceasefire. And uh, the other news is uh, Donald Trump wins Iowa. And what does this mean? It, uh, you know, some of us are not surprised. I'm surprised to the to the degree that he has won, and to some of the comments that he's there to save America. Uh, with us this morning is uh, news editor John Mulcahy. Good morning, John. Thank you for being with us. Good morning. Appreciate it. And nice so, Donald, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I just said nice to be here. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, on a cold day, a very cold day in yes. the winter. You know, even though it was very cold in Iowa, Donald Trump managed to win and win big. Did that surprise you? Uh, it did not surprise me. Um, I think that's because I've just assumed for a while now that uh, the Republican Party has really become Donald Trump's party. And it really doesn't exist as it used to exist. Um so uh, even the even the two candidates uh, who were opposing him there, well, actually there were, well, there was more than two, but the two main ones, uh, they all really just uh, take the Trump line. They sound uh, like him. And, excuse, yes, yeah. and and uh, and so you know, the, uh, I don't think that there really is any serious opposition in the Republican Party to Donald Trump's ideas. Absolutely. Which is rather frightening. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, DeSantis has even went as far as saying he will support uh, ethnic cleansing in Gaza. If Israel decides to deport all of the Palestinians somewhere, I don't know where, he will support that. And and then you got Nikki Haley, which is a Trump on heels, basically, you know, and it's, it's, it's really unbelievable. But I, I think that... Um, you know, besides just the the you know whether you were surprised or not surprised by the Iowa outcome, um, I think the the bigger thing to look at is just the whole situation of uh, the presidential election uh, in in the United States today, and um, you have one party which is basically the the Republican Party is offering. Uh, uh, an assault on civil liberties and austerity. The other party is offering imperialist war almost without end. Sure, <laughs> and, sure. and as a result of that, austerity also. Yeah. And, and I don't think that um, it, it's one of the strangest, it is the strangest uh, presidential election cycle that, that I've ever seen uh, because there's, there, you know, there's no real debate about any of the, the real questions, uh, the, the issues that facing uh, the American people uh, from just um, uh, what student debt or health care or, or housing or uh, any of the things that uh, really matter. And, and I don't I don't get the feeling that people are very engaged, really. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're so... Um, it's, it's really sad. It's really sad to find ourselves in a worse place than 2020. You know, here's we still have uh, Joe Biden, which he hasn't done anything except two wars, one in the Ukraine and one in, in the Middle East. And then, uh, you know, didn't accomplish much. You know, used to, I used to call him Sleepy Joe and now Sleepy Genocidal Joe. And then and then you got, uh, you know, uh, uh, Nadia, 
Trump, uh, the guy who instigated an insurrection against uh, our democracy. This is where we going from here. This is very scary, John. Well, uh, I have no idea where we're going. Uh, it, none of the options, none of the possibilities really seem very promising. Um, uh, unless, uh, well, I, I, I don't think there is an, an unless. I just don't know what the unless is. Um, unless somehow the masses of the people uh, organize themselves and demand something different, uh, a different, yeah. different policies. But I mean, it's like I'm not really seeing where that organization is going to come from. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The foundation for that is not there. Yeah, I, yeah. I would agree. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's 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 a, uh, and here's an issue here. If if we end up with the two candidates, jump uh, Trump and 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 Biden. If Trump already said he's going to be a dictator for whether it is for one day or two days or whatever it is, and if he doesn't win, I mean that's going to be trouble as well. You know, is, is that like a 2000, 2020 revisited another another problem? I mean, what are we looking at? Civil war? I mean, this is very scary. Well, um, you know, I I have no idea if we're looking at civil war. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, um, that conjures up all kinds of images that. Uh, I, I, I could I would say uh, civil conflict, a lot of civil conflict. I don't know, you yeah. know, yeah. whether it devolves into two large camps <clears throat> struggling for something or not. Um, so, um, I mean, you know, myself personally, um, I would suggest the socialist reorganization of society. But yeah. Yeah. it's just a personal view, you know. I'm not trying to. Uh, Sure, uh, sure, 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 sure. Any particular party or anything yeah. about that, but uh, you know, short of some, um, short of some major um, uh, uh, move, some major happening, uh, it, it's hard to see how it just doesn't get worse. Uh, on the other hand, I mean, you know, th things. Things happen that that do move people in one direction or the other, and those things. I mean, sad sad to say. I mean, one of those things could be a really really large war. Uh, uh, another could be uh, an economic collapse, or you know, an econo another economic crisis uh, that would just you know uh, change things. Uh, but neither of those are like particularly. Uh, Sure, appealing sure. alternatives, you know, or particularly appealing motivations. Uh, yeah. But the, I, I just think the country's in crisis, uh, even though, you know, for a lot of people, including me on a day-to-day -day basis, I can go around with my life and it doesn't seem like it's a crisis. I mean, yeah. I, it, well, it does, but I, I can live as though it were not. <laughs> But I sure. know the crisis, I know the crisis is there, and, and eventually, I think it will affect everybody. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, so that's a, such a gloomy outlook. I'm sorry, but <laughs> well, I mean, it's a reality. I think about it every day. It's like, wh where are we going from here? What, you know, what what should we expect? And 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 it doesn't look good, no matter how I look at it. I understand that the you know, independent vote at the end of the day decides the presidency, and I don't see a lot of voices coming out of that, and so they're as confused as it can be. So what we're going to do is, John, we're going to leave it to that for now. And, and unfortunately, we just don't have good news, but uh, hopefully something magical will happen and, and things change. So I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Thank you for talking with me. Absolutely. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Please stay tuned. At Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic in Dearborn, we provide effective physical therapy sessions in order to limit pain and discomfort. Top Rehab provides physical therapy care for any diagnosis prescribed by a physician, and we regularly see and treat conditions such as stroke, TMJ, fibromyalgia, sciatica, joint pain, and more. We use a variety of pain management methods, including modalities, soft tissue mobilization, and therapeutic exercise. If you're in need of physical rehabilitation or physical 
physical therapy, get the highest quality health care at Top Rehab. Most insurance is accepted and we're open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 8 to 6, Tuesday and Thursday 8 to 5, and Saturday 10 till 2. Call for an appointment today at 313-846-0555. That's 313-846-0555. Choose Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic on Michigan Avenue in Dearborn. Life's too short to be in pain. Life for Relief and Development has now been rated as one of the best charities for humanitarian aid. Life's humanitarian projects span the globe, and Life is celebrating its 30th anniversary of providing essential life-saving aid to people and communities in 36 countries, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. Where there is life, there is hope. And when disaster occurs here or around the world, including being one of the first responders to the Turkey-Syria earthquake crisis, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. We are looking to help the earthquake victims, and we take 0% overhead on emergency donations. So please help improve these efforts. Learn more about our involvement to help the helpless and bring hope where it's needed most. And make your tax-deductible donation to Life for Relief and Development now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. That's 248-424-7493. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. Uh, we're going to change to a different topic now, and it is about Arab American, Arab American history. You know, I have mentioned to you before is that no one tells our story better than us. And no one really explains who we are and what we are other than Arab Americans and Arab American writers. And, um, you know, I'm glad that we have a great writer with us today. We're going to be talking about his new book. And I want to emphasize the need for us not only to talk to Arab American writers, but to support Arab American writers because they tell our story. This is something very, very important. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that at the end of the segment. Why is that very important? You know, so with us this morning is Professor Hassan uh, Zainuddin. He's a, a writer, professor, and he teaches uh, creative writing at Oberlin College in Ohio. Welcome, and thank you so much for being with us on the show. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Khalil. It's an honor to be here. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about you first, and, and, and then we're going to talk about what inspired you to write the book and what's the book about. Sure. Yeah. You know, I can answer that. I, I can probably answer all, all those questions in one. Um, by explaining um, like my my biography, so um, I was uh, born in Washington D.C., um, but I actually grew up in uh, in, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I am of uh, Lebanese descent. Uh, both my parents are Lebanese, and um, you know my parents um, were uh, you know born uh, and raised in Lebanon. And and as I, as you know, you know there was the Lebanese civil war from 1975 to 1990, sure, and sure. Um, and so at the time, my dad was uh, a civil engineer, and he and my mom married in um, uh, in the late 70s, and it just became really difficult to live in Beirut, and um, so my like like many Lebanese expats, my dad found a job as an engineer in Saudi Arabia, so I was born in DC, um, but as a I was only two months when we, um, my mom uh, and, and sister and I went back to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia uh, to join my dad. And so I grew up uh, in Jeddah. And at one point in, in the early 80s, uh, kind of similar to what you were just saying, Khalid, before we went, we went on air, at one point my parents had enrolled uh, my sister and I in school in, in, in Beirut. And, uh, but then the Israeli invasion happened. And so yeah. that really... Um, um, and so my parents um, just scrapped those plans. Just and changed just, everything. It, it, yeah. ju it just changed everything. And, yeah. we, and we just remained in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And then it just so happened in, um, in 1990, when Iraq invaded Kuwait, at the time, there was this fear in Saudi Arabia that Iraq was going to also invade. Um, uh, uh, when Iraq invaded Kuwait, there was this fear that Iraq was going to 1990, yeah. 1990, yeah. it was going to mm -hmm. invade uh, Saudi Arabia. So my parents... Again, just decided to 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 uh to just kind of change plans, and uh and and we immigrated to America uh, in the early nineties, um and throughout my um throughout my twenties, I actually went uh, went to Lebanon. I just lived uh in Lebanon throughout my twenties, 
Um, but I should say, you know, growing up um, or living in the DC area from 1990 and onwards, um, although there's an Arab American community in the DC metro area, my sister and I were the only Arabs at our school. Exactly. And so we always felt like we were outsiders. Um, but it just so happened that um, we knew of this place called Dearborn, where there are a lot of Arabs who lived up north in Michigan. And believe it or not, I've said this in other interviews. Um, so my parents would order boxes, big boxes of batlawa from Shatilas, sure, you know, the, the, sure. the, fa the famous um, sweet shop in Dearborn. I know there are a lot of great, there are a lot of other great sweet shops in Dearborn, you know? <laughs> but for people outside of the city, that's all they know, Shatilas, right? Exactly, exactly. And, and, and so I'd always see the box. It came from Dearborn, Michigan. And my aunt, her, um, she ended up marrying uh, a Lebanese immigrant, and he actually um, uh, went to school at Detroit Mercy. And so we knew there was an Arab American community in, in, in Dearborn, but I didn't really know that much about it. So fast forward several years later, um, I was in a, um, a PhD program uh, in English uh, at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And I started to really research um, the Arab American experience in literature in depth. And Dearborn kept coming up, like in, in all these different books. Sure, so sure. I, I did a lot of archival research and and um, and so we're talking, I was in my early 30s. I'm I'm now 43. But so, you know, since I was a, a teenager or, 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 or an adolescent in the DC area to like a graduate student in my early 30s, <laughs> Dearborn has, had always been in the back of my mind. Sure, sure. And then when I started, um, I had um, a, a visiting position at another college in Ohio, and I taught creative writing and Arab American literature. And so I, I would tell my students about Dearborn, that there is this, you know, that there's an Arab American community, has the highest concentration of Arab Americans in the country up in Dearborn, and had yet to visit <laughs> Dearborn. Yeah. So um, eventually there was a job opening at the University of Michigan, Dearborn. And so my wife and I moved in 2018 uh, to Dearborn. Um, and so it I, immediately I just really uh, took to the city um, and, you know, it, it was a first. When was that? It was in 2018. The 2018, of, yeah, yeah. yeah. The spring yeah, of, yeah, uh, yeah it was uh, like uh, May of 2018. Sure. And, and um, you know, uh, um, very quickly, uh, I, uh, um, I just really took to the city. It was the first time like, in my life uh, in America that, you know, uh, it, uh, that you know, I could go into a coffee shop, I could go into a restaurant, a grocery store, and just start speaking in Arabic. Sure. You know? sure. And it, it got it got to the point where I'd I'd enter, especially on the east side of Dearborn, the Arab part of town. I'd enter an establishment, and I didn't know should I speak in English or in Arabic. <laughs> and I, I just love that you know sure, that experience. Sure. In some and, places, they may not even understand you in English. So <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. And, and and I'm not exaggerating when I say it, it was the first time in my life in America that I felt that I belonged. Somewhere. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I suggested to the. Uh, the the Lebanese uh, consulate used to be in downtown Detroit. That's right. They were mm -hmm. thinking about moving it from there to somewhere else. And I went there and they thought I was kidding. I said, I'm not kidding. Move the, the consulate right across from Shatila. And everybody started <laughs> laughing. I said, they said, why? I said, listen, when people come from outside of this area for the to do any business at the consulate, they come to Shatila first or they come to Shatila afterward. So save them the travel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, they do make uh, really good, um, good sweets. And we're proud of their, they have, they have a great story. You know, Allah uh, uh, the, the uh, bless his, uh, his soul, the founder right. of Riyadh Shatila and how he did it. And, and there are a lot of people like him, as, as you find out, you know, from right. the stories that you've written and all of that. So uh, why write the book? Yeah. So, you know, it, so it, a lot of the book is really um, like my love letter to Dearborn. Um, it, it, it's a place that I felt very much at home. And so when I start to feel very comfortable living in Dearborn um, and just interacting with people in the community, um, being a resident of the community, I just felt that it's such a rich place. And I, I and I'd always, I'd always been, like I was um, mentioning a bit earlier, I had always been obsessed with the city. So now that I was actually in the city, living in the city, 
uh, I felt like, okay, this is something, this is a place that I'd want, I want to write about. I, I really think that um, as writers, sometimes we, we write about our obsessions. Sure. And, sure. and so for, for me, my obsession was and still is Dearborn. Um, and so it, it was, it was, it was the stories in, in the, in the story collection came very quickly to me um, because I was basically writing about what I was living and experiencing and seeing firsthand. Um, and, you know, I was also inspired by um, that, yes, there's a big um, um, Lebanese population in Dearborn, but there's also a thriving Iraqi community, Yemeni community, Yemeni, Pal community, yes, yes. Yemeni uh, Palestinian community. So, yep. you know, the Egyptians, they're all, all kinds. Exactly. Yep, yep. So there's there's such a diverse <clears throat> range of Arab ethnicities in Dearborn. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you don't really see that elsewhere. I can't think of an, any other place that, that yeah. has that, you know? Yeah. And so again, so that also really inspired me um, to write about this place. And, you know, um, and I felt, I, it, it's strange because um, it's such a unique place, but I'm not sure many people outside of Michigan are aware or know of Dearborn. You know, um, so it has become an icon. I mean, if if people yeah. want to direct a comment toward Arab Americans or Muslim Americans in particular, <laughs> they say That's Dearborn. Right. Or That's if people want to demonstrate against Muslim Americans, they come to the main mosque and right in front of it. And, exactly. You know, and they demonstrate there. So it has become this this really iconic. Uh, That's right. There, there are a lot of great, great, great stories there, and I can't There's... tell you. You know, I mean, it, uh, I'm glad that you've written the book. And, uh, you know, when you talk about it, there's, there's an incredible excitement in your voice. And I love right. that. I'm sure <laughs> right. it has made it into what, what are some of the stories that, uh, that, that are included in the book? Well, you know, so it's a wide, it was really important. We were just talking about how there are many diverse Arab ethnicities in the city, right? It was really important to me um, to show in my book that there are a diverse range of voices in the city, there's no one Dearborn experience. You sure. know, everyone has their own experience. Um, so that was very important to me. So in the collection, there are characters from different generations, um, different backgrounds. Some of them, some of the characters were born and raised in the Arab world. Some of them were born and raised in Dearborn. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and a lot of the stories um, grapple with um, Islamophobia and anti-Arab mm -hmm. sentiment. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the opening short story uh, of, of the collection is called The Actors of Dearborn. And it's about this character um, uh, named Yusuf, who uh, is a census taker in the mm -hmm. summer of, uh, in, 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 um, uh, in the summer um, uh, uh, of uh, 2019. Um, and I remember that time um, because, you know, I, I was living in Dearborn at the time, and there was a strong presence of ICE agents, right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the community. I remember there was this one diner, um, Hamido, that that my Hamido, wife, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sandwiches, that, yeah, sandwiches, right, that my wife and I would frequent all the time. Yeah. And I remember coming across um, a story where two ICE agents went into Hamido and they tried to intimidate the supervisor in providing information on. Um, the supervisors or the manager's employees. And the manager knew, knew his rights and, and he refused to hand over those documents. But I remember there was a lot of anxiety um, in, in Dearborn at that time. Sure, sure. And obviously you had Trump in office um, and there's so much anti-Arab, anti-immigrant, anti-Muslim rhetoric uh, going on. And um, so that was something I was seeing and feeling and experiencing. And so I, I, I wanted to kind of speak to that in that short story. So there, and there are other short stories. One short story um, is set um, right before the attacks of 9-11 and after 9-11 and the consequences of, you know, again, anti-Arab sentiment following the attacks of 9-11. Um, so I, I, I tackle that, those experiences, but I also tackle what's great about Dearborn is that um, there's so, there's like a, a thriving um, entrepreneurial spirit of the yes. city, you know, there's so many strong businesses. Yes. Now, you know, the mayor Abdullah Hamoud, the first Arab American, Muslim American mayor of Dearborn. There are more Arab American um, and Muslim American um, 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 politicians now, especially in local politics. So I, I also wanted to pay tribute to that. That yes, you know, there's still a lot of anti-Arab sentiment that we're up Absolutely. against, Absolutely. but at the same time. Um, um, 
like I got so proud of the city too with what Arab Americans have been doing. Yeah. Um, so I also wanted to the accomplishment of Arab Americans. Yeah, yes, absolutely. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This is what we're going to do. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Please stay tuned. When you're looking for the best in optical care, Dr. Imad Nakash is your doctor to see. With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Imad Nakash. See Dr. Imad Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There's two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248 248- Two nine nine three nine three seven. Get ready for an amazing experience at Ishtar Restaurant on 15 Mile Road in Sterling Heights. Enjoy excellent hospitality from owners Ali al-Baghdadi and Fatty Bottom serving the best in Mediterranean food. Try Chef Ali al-Baghdadi's famous shawarma, the best Iraqi grills and food, and the best Arabic and international dishes. Dine in our authentic atmosphere or take out. Call 586-698-2585 or check us out on Facebook. Ishtar Restaurant practices all CD guidelines and is open every day 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Have an amazing experience today at Ishtar Restaurant, 3625 15 Mile Road, Sterling Heights. Are you going to start a restaurant or grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Naji Aboud at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Naji Aboud now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design, new location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Naji Aboud, 734-744-9796. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. Uh, we're talking to Professor Zainad Dean, uh, a writer and uh, teaches uh, creative writing at Oberlin College. What kind of reception have you gotten from the community? Yeah, no, it's been it's been very positive. Um, um and I think it it means the world to me when, especially um, you know, people from Dearborn who've reached out to me to say that um, um, that we we saw ourselves in this story collection, or I, I I've I've received kind of like feedback that says um, only someone from Dearborn could have written this book. So that that means a lot to me. Um, because it, it speaks to um, the the authenticity of the stories and that it's speaking to several people. And what's also the reception, not just from the Arab American community, what's been very important to me too, is that um, from members of different communities, uh, not necessarily an Arab American community, um, ha- have also reached out to me um, to say that the book has resonated with them. Because, you know, the, the book is very specific, culturally specific, right? It's capturing um, the Arab American community in Dearborn. But my hope is that it's also universal, that it can speak to it is. many, it is. many different people. Um, Absolutely. So Absolutely. that's important to me, too. Yeah. yeah. And I remember going out on, you know, like being invited to speak at different events in Florida and other places. And I'm talking about the, my experience as a... I remember one of the first stories I've written in the St. Petersburg Times mm-hmm. and was how I became an American citizen. And that was, I mean, received tremendous, tremendous support from and, and the readership there. Mm-hmm. There were very few Arab Americans, but I, I received a lot of support. But, you know, you, you read the stories of different immigrants, a very similar struggle That's and right. how you come in and how you learn the language and how you fit. And, 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 and then you get to the point where... Now that, you know, your your children, uh, what they're going to, you know, that divide, a little bit divide, a little bit gulf between parents and children. Parents speak Arabic, don't speak English. And then, you know, all of these things, which is that's what the, you know, Italians went through. That's what exactly. the Polish went through. That's what every community has gone through. You know, it makes it easier if there are other elements that are in common. But if you're yeah. foreign to the, to, the, to the land and then you're a different religion, that adds to it, too. You know, that's right. Uh, how much of a uh, the the religion aspect was in, is in the book? 
You know, uh, so it, it varies. So like I was saying before, it was important to me to show um, a diverse range of voices. So some of the characters are very secular. Um, some of the characters are religious. So it, it varies from, 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 from one story to the next. Just to kind of show that, you know, there, there, and there are many different ways of expressing one's religion or one's Muslim identity, sure. right? Sure. Um, sure. Everyone sees it differently. So their characters... You know, um, who I, you know, who identify maybe as uh, as Muslim, but they don't necessarily follow all the tenets of of the religion. They're not practicing, yeah. They're yeah, they're not. Yeah, so there, yeah. there's like a, a a wide range, just to kind of show that you know, different yeah. people have different relationships with 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 with, um, with uh, the religion. Have you come on uh, come up on any stories now that you wish like i wish i included this in the book (laughs) (laughs) yeah you know so i i I, well you know there are a lot of stories that i actually cut from the book too oh okay Um, yeah because i thought they just weren't strong enough they just weren't good enough they didn't or or they just were a bit repetitive yes i didn't include those but um no i'm still like i was saying before i'm very i'm still very much obsessed with dearborn so i continue to write stories uh, about dearborn um and so i'm working on another collection about the city and in the back of my mind i i've been working or i've been thinking about um um a novel that's set in dearborn as well um i thought about that too you know i thought about that too then then it's just like you know life life sometimes doesn't give you a break so that's right you are in the in the field which is really makes it much 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 that's easier. right and and as you know we we left um michigan um this past summer um um because I, I i i'm now uh at um oberlin college but you know oberlin is is very close to dearborn so i've already been back to michigan how far is it only about a two hour drive, two That's hours, 10 minutes. It's not bad. Yeah. So I, I've actually been back several times already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just last week I was, I was there um, a couple of times. So I'm, I'm, I'm. State always... lines shouldn't keep you away. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, it doesn't. I'm, I'm pretty much, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much always there. Did you have any difficulties finding publishers? Uh, no, I think, uh, no, no, it wasn't. I mean, um, uh, no, I think you know the 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 so the publisher uh, they're they're called Tin House um, and um, they have been publishing. Um, it, it's a great publishing house. They really champion the voices of um, writers of color, and they also have um, they also champion a, um, writers who have um, how to put this like almost like a. a a whimsical comedic style of writing sure, sure. so i think my style of writing the content the subject matter uh really spoke to that publishing house that's good um, yes yeah, so that was yeah. good but i i do think that more um publishing houses are are becoming more open to arab voices i mean i still think there's more that obviously they can do but i i, yeah. I think that more arab writers are, are getting published today yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and this is something I want to share with our listeners and the fact that, you know, like every time I hear there's a new book for Arab Americans, I buy it right away. Mm-hmm. And the reason I do that is I lend support to this, this this particular writer first. Second, the more successful Arab American writers become, the easier it is for publishers to say yes, I want to support you. That's yes, right. I want to publish your book. Mm-hmm. You know, so that contribution twenty dollars, thirty dollars is really going toward a bigger goal. And that is to help and support Arab American writers in general. You know, exactly. even if I don't like the person, I still I still <laughs> do contribute because I see the bigger cause. You know, and and I have this this dream of one day establishing this uh, like a, a publishing not necessarily a publishing house, but more like a, an organization that promotes writers and support writers because some writers need support. I mean, exactly. you're fortunate that's what you do, but other writers need to take time off to write a book and. So there'll be more of a committee that will say, yes, this is a great book. We need to support this particular writer and give him time and give him and then give him funding so they can they can do that. So exactly. That, yeah, That's that would true. be really, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, um, and, and especially with, with younger Arab American writers, knowing that they have important stories to tell. Um, I remember so at, at the reading I gave in Dearborn um, during the book signing, there was this young Arab American man who came up to me. And he said he's from Flint, Michigan. 
and he wants to do something. So, so my, you know, my stories are linked stories about Dearborn. And he was saying that he wants to write like a story collection about the Arab American community in Flint, Michigan. And I said, you should, you should do it. I mean, it's yeah, a fascinating yeah. place. There's so much to write about. And I've never, I haven't read anything about the Arab American community, yeah. you know, in, in Flint, Michigan. So, yeah. no. and that's, you know, that speaks to, <clears throat> you know, there, uh, there's so many stories to tell. And it's about recognizing that, you know, you have a story to tell, an important story yeah. to tell and, yeah. and embracing yeah. that. Yeah. I remember uh, putting together uh, uh, an outline for a novel and I sent it to this uh, well-known uh, um, editor. And um, and at the time, my writing was still in the early stages and he wrote back to me and he said, thank you for, you have a great idea, but, you know, it is the execution what makes, he said, every immigrant has a story to tell. It's the execution and the details that makes a story. And and it is true. You know, there are a lot of great stories to tell. And, you know, it would take somebody professional like you to take him and really tell him in a good way and in and, and a good good read, you know. So uh, I, I look forward to really read uh, the book. Is there anything I haven't asked you that people need to know about the book? You know, I I, I would just say that the the um, um, the book is comedic. Um, I, I, I consider myself a comedic writer. Um, I, I would probably say these stories are more tragedy comic, right? There's tragedy and comedy. It's really important to me um, as a writer, um, um, especially a fiction writer, to entertain people. I, I do want them to really have fun and enjoy the book because um, that's one way of, you know, w- one way of, um, uh, you know, um, dramatizing a community to someone sure. that especially sure. community that people aren't readers may not be familiar with one way is to kind of uh, seduce them right and, and yes. kind of like lull them into your story so the way i try to do that is through comedy um so i'm hoping that the story collection yeah you'll learn about the arab american community and, and it's universal but hopefully you'll also laugh you know yeah. And, yeah. and and um um Comedy is a good way to teach. It is. It is. It's, really good way to teach. Yeah. it's a fun way to teach. It relaxes you. And then you can relate information. That's what right. would be your advice to aspiring writers? These are just, they're just starting. Yeah. You know, I would say um, to read a lot, read wild, yeah. widely. Um, that It's so important. Um, read different genres, um, read different writers from different generations, different uh, eras. Um and write, write as much as you can. Um, it, writing is also about having a routine, setting aside a few hours a day. It, it's a grind and you yeah. kind of have to do it. it, yeah. it you, got, you almost have to treat it as a job uh, to be successful. Exactly. You need to be professional. If you're not professional, right. you're not going to work. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, there are many days I wake up, I'm not necessarily inspired to write, but because I have that routine, you know, it's like a job. I still yeah. sit down and see, you know, I might have a bad day one day, and then the next day it might be a bit better. You know, it's about building that momentum. So yeah, reading widely, um, making a routine part of your life and also perseverance, you know, I mean, I, 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 I you know, I failed a lot before I was able to publish this book. So Absolutely. it's Absolutely. part of, it's just part of the, um, the profession that, you know, Absolutely. success goes hand in hand with failure. So well, writing is one of the hardest professions out there. Yeah. I, I remember interviewing, um, a brain surgeon and um you know i wrote a short story on him and and the next day when it appeared in the paper he called me he said that i can never do what you do i said what are you talking about you're a brain surgeon <laughs> he said no no it's just the way you put it together and it's such a small space and you told so much about me you know about what i do and all of that and and i'm like to me i take it for granted that's what i do every day you know it, it is a good you know good writing is very 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 hard to do you know right. I, I i tell people sometimes they come to me and they tell me you know, I've, I've rewritten this several times and I say, listen, Hemingway used to rewrite sentences 50 times. That's right. If a master like Hemingway wrote it 50 times, we should write it a thousand times. So the <laughs> more you do, the better, you know. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad. Thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to be with us and, and uh, can't wait. I've, I remember seeing you around the community, but I did not know who you are. Definitely in this time, <laughs> yeah. I want somebody to say hello. If you're in the area, let me know. I would love to talk to you more. And where do we find the book if we're going to buy it? Yeah, you know, it's available um, online at all online outlets in, in the bookstores too. Um, just Dearborn. If you just 
plug in Dearborn, it'll come up, or 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 my name, Hassan Venedin, it'll come up. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, and again, before I let you go, I just want to remind our listeners: it, it it's not about this show. It's not about uh, uh, you know Professor Zainuddin. It's not about individuals. It's about helping Arab American writers and helping us tell the story of the community. If you if every time there's a new book and you support it, you're supporting a much bigger cause than an individual. And, you know, it happened that we have a, a good writer, a good, you know, a, 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 somebody who's telling a good story that adds to the beauty of it. So I encourage you to read it, to to buy it, to, you know, give it as a gift, you know, do all of these things that you need to do. So this is something very important. Again, final final thoughts. Yeah. Thank you so much. Khalid. It's been an honor and pleasure to talk with you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, please stay tuned. We're going to take a short break. Ziad brand quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad. Quality products from our family to yours. With more than 30,000 successful in vitro fertilizations, IVF Michigan is now ranked as one of America's best fertility clinics according to Newsweek magazine. IVF Michigan fertility centers are the recognized leaders in high quality fertility care. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and nine other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. A founding member, American Board Certified Dr. Nicholas Shama, is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. He has performed over 20,000 successful IVF cases and it's helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. When it's time to get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at one of America's best fertility clinics, call IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio toll free at 855-952-9600. 855-952-9600. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. Uh, this is Khalil Hashim with the US Arab Radio. As you well know, uh, January is when the tax filing starts. And uh, like it or not, ready or not, we have to file. And with us this morning is Luis Garcia. He's from the IRS, IRS Media Relations. We appreciate th- Good morning and thank you for being with us. Well, thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. We appreciate you taking the time. So it is January. When does tax season officially begin? So it officially begins on the 29th of uh, this month of January, but it doesn't mean that you have to wait until the 29th. You can actually start if you have all the documents that you need, uh, you can start right now and uh, uh, put together your taxes or hand them to your tax professional or uh, do them yourself, whatever it is, and uh, just have it ready to go and uh, to be processed as soon as it is being accepted by the IRS on the 29th. So get it ready, but not to file it. Just wait on file until the 29th. Well, you can actually send it to us. It'll sit in a queue. Okay. It won't okay. be processed until the 29th. 29th. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. And what's the uh, uh, tax filing deadline this year? So it, it's usually the 15th of April. And this year it is the 15th of April. And in uh, years back, uh, past maybe four years, it's kind of jumped around um, in part, it was the pandemic, and then it were different federal holidays or state holidays that um, in the District of Columbia, I should say, holidays that uh, uh, delayed it. But it's the 15th this year. Absolutely. Now, if somebody doesn't file by, by the 15th, do they get penalized? Well, it depends. If you are uh, like most people, you're going to get a refund. Uh, most people in Michigan, most people in the country uh, get a refund. And in Michigan, it's about 80 uh, 81%. Um, and the penalty is you don't get your money. You know, we're, sure, you're sure. sitting on your money. Uh, sure. But if you owe and uh, you don't pay by the 15th, that's, then yes, you can incur uh, penalties, interest, and so on. So it's yeah. it's best to avoid that. Yeah. And if there's a valid reason they can they can apply for a, for an extension. And it, actually, the, the extension is automatic. You don't need a, any kind of reason uh, for an extension. Um, you, and you can file for an extension uh, now, or I should say mm-hmm. as soon as filing season opens. But um, 
you can and you can file on the 15th of April if you need to, but a extension gives you automatically six months in which to file your tax return. But if you owe, you owe on April 15th. So uh, it's best to pay and uh, make sure that you get that in as quickly as possible. So we, we can reconcile what we have, what you have, make sure that it adds up. And if there's any remainder, we'll send it to you as a refund. Uh, but it it's a uh, extension to file, not an extension to pay. Absolutely, absolutely. And what what's the free filing? So free file is a, a partnership between the IRS and eight different software companies, and they work with us to uh, provide free tax filing software. And depending on your circumstances, um, and if you want to, for example, uh, have a state tax done, uh, some of them provide that absolutely for free. The thing is, you have to have uh, income of less than $79,000. And 70% of all Americans make less than $79,000. $79, so you wanna make sure uh, that you're in that range. Um, and it will, it's just like any other uh, tax software. Uh, these, but this has been vetted and approved by the IRS. And uh, it will do ask you all the questions, uh, make sure that all the documents you need are there, any credits, any deductions, whatever it is, uh, it will do all the work for you and then file it directly with the IRS. And if you ask for a direct deposit uh, and file electronically, you get your refund in about 21 days. Wonderful. But, but with, with, uh, with free file, there's a little trick. It's very important. If you want 100% guaranteed free free file, you have to start at irs.gov because okay. there's a lot of people, including my own family members, who what they do is, or what they did before <clears> they, <throat> they had the unpleasant surprise, is they would put free file into a search engine. Sure, and, sure, sure. And then they would end up at a site, and it's a legitimate site. These are these are uh, uh, legitimate companies, but they have little fees and hidden things that yeah, yeah, at yeah. the end they hit you with a with no. a cost. Yeah, yeah. Guaranteed free file is only through IRS.gov. Through the IRS, yes. Now, when you say seventy nine thousand, uh, that's gross income. That's gross income, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. It doesn't matter whether you're single or married. It's just the gross yeah. income yep. when just, filing. Just the income. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I used to do that a long time ago uh, before I started my business. I used to do that. I used to buy software and, you know, do the file on myself and send it down. I did that for years, Yeah. you know, so, um, but uh, then I learned it's better, you know, when you, when you have your business, it's better to, to work with a professional because it's a little, little bit more complicated. And, and that's a good point that uh, you can do if, uh, if you qualify, you can use a free file through irs.gov. Um, you can purchase the software if you feel comfortable doing that. Um, but there are great tax preparers mm -hmm. uh, there are you know you see them up and down the neighborhood yeah, um, yeah. when you're driving they're all they're out there trying to get their business and these people are well trained uh, they know what they're doing uh, there's also people who can not just prepare your taxes but they represent they can represent you and if Absolutely. you have let's say a complex business or an international business um you want to deal with a, a cpa or a tax attorney or an enrolled agent is also somebody who has a lot of education yeah. And can sure. also represent you before the sure. IRS. Yeah, I mean specifically if people have a straightforward, uh, you know, they 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 get a, a you know paycheck and there's no complications and if, and I think free file is is really the best way to go. When will free file be available? A free file is started being available last Friday, so uh, you can go to irs.gov, uh, click on free file, and uh, then. Pick the software company that you want to go with, and then from IRS, the the government website, it will transfer you over to their website, the one that you want, and then it'll start the process of doing your your uh, preparing your tax return. Now, this year, when should people expect uh, the refund? So, from the date that you file, if you file electronically, and uh, whether you do it with the software or whether your tax professional does it with software uh, from that date uh, 21 days or less is the norm and but that doesn't mean everybody gets it for 21 days or less and and we know that a lot of people are you know they they, they want their money and it's totally understandable but um the first thing is if you don't get it within 21 days you're you may 
um, be upset, but understand that we're making sure that, you know, you're not being a victim of uh, being victimized by any kind of fraud or identity theft. Uh, if we're holding up your return, it's because maybe there's something that isn't, uh, maybe you forgot a document and we need to get that uh, additional information from you. So uh, holdups usually are because we're trying to protect you. Um, and we want to make sure that uh, you have everything uh, complete for your return, that maybe you forgot, um, you know, let's say you you had a couple jobs and you forgot a W-2. Well, that sure. employer sent us a copy of that W-2 that you forgot. And we and so we're holding up your, your refund because you haven't really completed your tax return because you left that out. So uh, and make sure that you do everything you can to make sure it's, it's absolutely complete. And for those who are, uh, you know, are getting uh, 1099s or W-2s or whatever uh, tax documents, those should be, those are required to be in the mail uh, by the end of January. So the first week of February, you should have all your documents. Absolutely. And is there a way to track my refund on the IRS uh, website? There is. Uh, it's called Where's My Refund, uh, mm -hmm. which is a pretty straightforward uh, <laughs> tool that we have. And you can do it at, at, on our website at irs.gov or uh, you can download the app uh, IRS to go uh, from your app store and, uh, on your smartphone and you can track your refund. The thing that we really want to get out there is you it, it's only updated once a day, uh, usually okay. in the middle of the night between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. Because sure. I have neighbors who just are constantly hitting <laughs> that, that uh their phone, their smartphone, trying to figure out if there's any updates on their refund. And yeah. it's just updated once a day. So whatever, when you wake up, look at it, and that's going to be it for the next 24 hours. It's not going to make it any faster, no matter how many times you tap on. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish it works that way, but it, it it does not. Now, now when we'll be getting like, will be they have the option, like you're going to get a, a message, a text message, anything like that, or or not yet? Uh, for, for now, no. Uh, for now, we're, we're <clears throat> uh, very careful because we want to be uh, sure that people... Um, that that people are are the ones that are are doing the proactive step of checking on it as opposed to sitting back and getting something from the IRS that can be confused with some kind of scam or you know some kind of fraud that uh, uh there there could be involved in so uh sure. it's important that uh that listeners understand that tax time is is scam time and exactly exactly these these criminals are really sophisticated and they're not just in the US they're they're coming from all over the world and uh and they want your money they want your refund they want your bank account they want your yeah. your family's uh uh personal information so so be very careful yeah yeah because you know um, um one thing that if there's an issue with the IRS the IRS sends you a letter they do not call you is that correct well we sometimes call it's very rare but the okay. IRS does sometimes call. But here are the red flags. The IRS will never demand immediate payment. Mm -hmm. uh, the IRS will never demand that you pay by a particular payment method. Usually scam uh, criminals are asking for um, gift cards. IRS does not accept gift cards for payment of tax. And the thing that is the most, the first thing they do is they threaten you. And by threatening you, they're trying to trigger a panic response so that you start stop thinking, start reacting, and give them what they want. And they don't That's just right. want your money. They want your the information. Information, your, yes, your yes. Social yeah. security numbers, all that stuff. Yeah. So we, we talked about free filing for 79 and less. What are the best ways for those who are above 79000 So if you make more than $79,000 a year uh, and you don't, uh, want to use free file. And, and I might add to that, uh, we also have the Accounting Aid Society in Metro Detroit, uh, but throughout the country, we have the what's called a volunteer income tax assistance. Um, Access and Dearborn does a fantastic job of uh, making sure that they provide free tax filing for people. And uh, these are professionals that are volunteers, but they've been uh, trained using IRS, uh, uh, IRS certified uh, training uh, information, and, and they're certified by the IRS, and they're using software that's been vetted by the IRS. So that's another uh, key that you can use is, is go to irs.gov, click on volunteer income tax assistance, and uh, you can have a, a volunteer do it if you are moderate to low income. Now, for those who are above it, um, 
you can use free file. The only thing is it's it doesn't do all the steps for you. It doesn't prepare your taxes like the uh, the different software companies that we were talking about. Um, they uh, it, it doesn't ask you questions. It's basically forms that are in an electronic format. And if you're comfortable and familiar with uh, you know filling out taxes the old way that you know, people used to send them in uh, through the mail, you can do that for free at irs.gov using free file, uh, free fillable forms. And sure. these are uh, forms online. You could walk away, come back, you know, uh, keep going, and, and you can file it directly with the IRS. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with that, we <clears throat> suggest uh, use a tax professional. But when you do, make sure that they are who they say they are. So exactly. If, exactly. if it's... Uh, uh, you know, a, a tax preparer or a, a tax practitioner, enrolled agent, CPA, or tax attorney, you can check them out at irs.gov. We have a directory of tax professionals, and they should be registered with us and have uh, what is called a PTIN, a preparer tax identification number. Now, what happens a lot, well, what happens more than it, it should, is there are some people who they... They're uh, these the kitchen table tax preparers and they do taxes, you know, for uh, their neighborhood. Sometimes you'll see certain professions like all the plumbers go to this one lady because she does a great job with, uh, you know, deductions and so on. But they are most often ghost preparers. And by ghost preparer, I mean, they will fill out your tax forms. You will sign them and they have nothing to do with it. They, they, yeah. they will send it to you, but they will not put their name on it. They will not, uh, um, they don't have a PTIN. And um, if there's an issue, you have no recourse other than I mean, you are always responsible for your own tax return. But there you have some say with the IRS when you're like, hey, this person prepared my taxes. And, there, and there's, you know, a, a little bit of give there as opposed to somebody who is a, a complete phantom that is not yeah. showing up in any way. So never, ever let anybody prepare your tax return if they don't sign it. If you're paying them, make sure that they are assigning that return and putting their PTIN on it. And you can take that number, go to irs.gov and look it up and make sure that they are legitimate. Absolutely. At the end of the day, you know, we are responsible for our taxes. You know, even if they're signed, and correct me if I'm wrong, at the end of the day, you know, the information we give to the uh, preparer, we are we are responsible for that. Right, exactly. Yeah. So if you uh, forget something, or if you purposely leave something, uh, uh, you know, you you had a big transfer <clears throat> of money that you you don't want to, uh, you know, put on your return, or um, you know, you you are claiming something fraudulently, uh, the tax professional, the tax preparer, uh, can only work with what you give them or don't give exactly. them. Exactly. Exactly. If I need more information, where do I find it? Best thing is irs.gov. We've got, uh, you know, tools. We have interactive assistance. Uh, I, I encourage everybody to look at their tax account. You can go to irs.gov and look at uh, my account um, and then go through the process of verifying your identity. Make sure that uh, you look at your, just like your bank account, you can look at it online. Same thing with your tax account. See what your last payment was, what your last refund was. Um, if you had a payment plan, what that looks like. Any letters the IRS sent you will be there as well. So uh, it's it's a nice snapshot to look at your, your tax account whenever you want to. Uh, just go Wonderful. to iris.gov. Wonderful. Is there anything I haven't asked you that people need to know? Just be very, very careful with scammers. Uh, they come in all flavors. Um, and anybody that says they uh, they know somebody that can give you a really big refund, look out because uh, th there is no secret to uh, getting a big refund. If anybody guarantees you a refund without knowing what your tax situation is, it's a scam. And in what they're doing in most cases is not just stealing part of that money. They're splitting that refund. You may get a little bit more than you got last year, but they've fraudulently packed so much. They've packed so much fraud onto your return that they're getting the bulk of it. Um, and then the IRS will come after you and say, "Hey, you claimed all this. Where where's the proof?" 
You have exactly. to pay all of that back with interest. And that person usually disappears. They not just have your money that you have to pay back, but they also have your, your social information. security number, your children's yeah. social security number, yeah. your spouse. Yeah. So, on. so be very, very careful. Do yeah. your homework. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. And I want to thank everybody who has been on the show today. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. All right. Thanks. We'll see you. Bye-bye.